Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kannan, Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Anjali Ammal Mahalingam Engineering College, Koyil Vinni. I am happy to meet you through the video lecture in the new topic for discussion. In the lecture series, we are going to solve UPSC Engineering Service Examination Mechanical Engineering Preliminary Questions. So, the preliminary questions, they are MCQ type, multiple choice questions. To, under, to check your understanding of the subject. The first lecture is on the topic thermodynamics and uh, the questions will be from properties of thermodynamics and the zeroth law of thermodynamics. The first question, which of the following thermodynamic properties are intensive properties? There are three properties, density, entropy and viscosity. The options for the answers, whether all the three are the intensive property, 1 and 2, the intensive property, 2 and 3 are intensive property or 1 and 3. Density and the viscosity, they are the intensive properties, independent of mass of the system and entropy, which depends on the mass, it is an extensive property. The correct answer is 1 and 3, density and viscosity, they are intensive properties independent of mass. The second question, certain quantities cannot be located on a graph by a point, but are given by the area under the curve corresponding to the process. These quantity in concepts of thermodynamics are called as cyclic function, point function, path function and real function. The answer is path function. So, the, the quantity which cannot be located in a graph, they are represented by the area under the corresponding curve of, uh, to a particular process. The path functions are heat and work in thermodynamics. Next question, the property of thermodynamic system is a path function, point function, a quantity which does not change in reversible process a quantity which changes when the system undergoes a cycle. So, basically the property of a thermodynamic system is a point function. So, the correct answer is point function. Property of a thermodynamic system is a point function. Next question, internal energy of a system is dependent on the following aspect, molecular weight, molecular structure, degree of molecular activity. Each of the above are correct, either 1 and 2, 1 and 3, 2 and 3 and 1, 2, 3. So, internal energy depends on, it is a, when you look at the internal energy at the microscopic level, it depends on the molecular activity. So, the molecular weight, molecular structure and molecular activity. So, degree of molecular activity, all the three are the answers. So, the internal energy of the system is dependent on molecular weight, molecular structure, degree of molecular activity. The next question, consider the following statement. In an ideal gas, there are not intermolecular forces of attraction and repulsion. Second point, at a very low pressure, all gases and vapors approach ideal gas behavior. Third point, enthalpy of an ideal gas depends only on the temperature. Which of the above statements are correct? Either 1, 2, 3, 1 and 2, 1 and 3 and 2 and 3. The correct answer is 1, 2, 3. So, all the three statements are correct. In an ideal gas, there are not intermolecular forces of attraction or repulsion. At the very low pressure, all gases and vapors approaches, approach ideal gas behavior. Enthalpy of an ideal gas depends only on the temperature. Next question, consider the following statements for comparison of heat and work. Both the heat and work are transient phenomena. Both the heat and work are boundary phenomena. Both the heat and work are path function 
and inexact differentials. So, which of the above statements are correct? So, 1 and 2, 1, 2, 3, 2 and 3 and 1 and 3. The correct answer is 1, 2, 3. All the three statements are correct with respect to uh, for heat and work. So, both the heat and work are in transient phenomena. Both the heat and work are boundary phenomena. They cross the boundary of the system. Both the heat and work are path function and inexact differential. Next question, consider the following statements. Gases have very low critical temperature. Gases can be liquefied by isothermal comp compression. In engineering problems, water vapor in atmosphere is treated as an ideal gas or perfect gas. Which of these statements are correct? 1 and 2, 2 and 3, 1 and 3, 1, 2, 3. The correct answer is 2 and 3. So, the gases be liquefied by isothermal compression. That statement is correct. In engineering problem, water vapor in atmosphere is treated as an ideal, ideal or perfect gas. These two are the correct statements. First statement is not correct. Next question, which one of the following statement is correct during the adiabatic charging of an ideal gas into an empty cylinder from a supply main? The specific enthalpy of the gas in the supply main is equal to the specific enthalpy of the gas in the cylinder. Second statement, the specific enthalpy of gas in the supply main is equal to the specific internal energy of the gas in the cylinder. The specific internal energy of the gas in the supply main is equal to the specific enthalpy of the gas in the, in the cylinder. The specific internal energy of the gas in the supply main is equal to the specific internal energy of the gas in the cylinder. So, the correct answer is option B. The specific enthalpy of the gas in the supply main equal to the specific internal energy of the gas inside the cylinder. Inside the cylinder, it is at constant volume. We have to consider internal energy, specific internal energy. In the supply main, the gas is flowing. We have to consider, we have to take specific enthalpy of the gas. So, specific enthalpy of the gas in the supply main is equal to specific internal energy of the gas in the cylinder. Next question, a body of mass 20 kilogram falls freely in vacuum. It has fallen through a vertical distance of 50, mil, 50 meter. The gravitational acceleration may be assumed as 10 meter per second square. What is the thermodynamic work done by the body? There are three options, 100 Newton meter, 100, 1000 Newton meter, 10 kilojoules, 0, 1 kilo Newton meter. The answer, work done depends on the medium in which the body is falling in. In vacuum, there is no resistance to the body, hence work done is equal to 0. So, in, in the, when the body is falling in the vacuum, there is no resistance, so work done equal to 0. Next question, a tank containing a fluid is steered by a pedal wheel. The work input to the pedal wheel is 5090 kilojoules. The heat transfer from the tank is 1500 kilojoules. What is the change in internal energy? Consider the tank and the fluid inside a control surface. The options, the answers are minus 3590 kilojoules, plus 3590 kilojoules, plus 4590 kilojoules, minus 4590 kilojoules. The answer to the problem, heat transfer is minus 1500 kilojoules. So, the heat is, heat is transferred from the tank. So, heat is rejected from the tank. So, it is mi minus 1500 kilojoules. Work done. So, work is done by the pedal wheel. So, work is input. It is given into the system. So, it is again minus 5090 kilojoules. So, from the first law of thermodynamics, Q equal to W plus delta U. So, delta U, the change in internal energy delta U equal to Q minus W. So, Q equal to minus 1500 minus W. So, already there is a negative sign. So, this becomes plus 5090. So, the answer is plus 3590 kilojoules. So, the correct answer is plus 3590 kilojoules. The next question, when the valve of, a, of an evacuated bottle is opened, the atmospheric air rushes into it. If the atmospheric pressure is 101.325 kilopascal and the 0.6 meter cube of air enters into the bottle, then the work done by the air will be there are four options, 80.8 kilojoules, 70.8 kilojoules, 60.8 kilojoules and 50.8 kilojoules. The answer, work done for filling the bottle. So, W equal to pressure P into delta V. 
delta V is the change in the volume. So, pressure is 101.325 into 6 minus 0. So, final volume is 6 meter cube, initial volume is 0. 0, there is no air inside the bottle, 6 minus 0. The answer is 60.795 kilojoules. So, 60.8 kilojoules is the correct answer. Next question, a steel tank placed in hot environment contains 5 kg of air at 4 atmosphere and 30 degrees Celsius. A portion of air is released till the pressure becomes 2 atmosphere. Later, the temperature of the air in the tank found to be 150 degrees Celsius. The quantity of air allowed to escape. The answer is 3.21 kilogram. So, we will see how in the next slide. The volume of the tank remained constant. So, then P1 by M1 R T1 equal to P2 by M2 R T2. So, P1 equal to 4 atmosphere, M1 equal to 5 kilogram, R is getting cancelled, T1 equal to 303 Kelvin. This is equal to P2 equal to 2 atmosphere divided by M2 is the unknown. So, T2 equal to 423 Kelvin. So, solving the equation, M2 will be 1.79 kg. So, after releasing the gas, the mass of the uh, gas inside is 1.79 kg. The quantity of air allowed to escape is equal to M1 minus M2. 5 minus 1.79 equal to 3.21 kg. That is the answer. The next question, there are two statements. Statement number 1, if two, if two systems are in thermal equilibrium with the third system, then they are not in thermal equilibrium with each other. So, read the statement carefully. They are not in thermal equilibrium with each other. Statement 2, zero law of thermodynamics is the basis for the temperature measurement. There are four options given. Option 1, both the statement 1 and 2 are individually true and statement 2 is the correct explanation for the statement 1. B, option B, both the statement 1 and 2 are individually true, but the statement 2 is, 2 is not the correct explanation of the statement 1. Option C, statement 1 is true, but the statement 2 is false. Option D, statement 1 is false, but the statement 2 is true. So, here statement 1 is, if two system are in thermal equilibrium with the third system, then they are not in thermal equilibrium with each other. So, this is wrong. So, if they are, they are, so this is the zero law of thermodynamics. If the two system are thermal equilibrium with third system, then the third, then, then they are in thermal equilibrium with each other. So, not, it is misleading. So, the statement is wrong, is false statement. Statement 2, zero law of thermodynamics is the basis for temperature measurement. This is true. So, zero law of thermodynamics is the uh, base, basis for the temperature measurement. So, the option is, statement 1 is false and statement 2 is true. That is the correct option. Next question again, two statements are there. Statement 1, the energy of an isolated system is constant. Statement 2, the entropy of an isolated system can increase but cannot decrease. So, the answer once again, statement 1 is true and the 2 is false. So, entropy, energy of a system, isolated, is, isolated system is constant, that is true. Entropy of an isolated system can increase but do not, cannot decrease. So, this is wrong. This is not the correct statement. Next question again, statement 1, there are two statements. Statement 1, in an isolated system, the heat transfer del Q and work transfer del W are always 0. Statement 2, in an isolated system, entropy always remains constant. So, which are all the, which is the correct statement? The correct statement is, both the statement 1 and 2 are individually true, but the statement 2 is not the correct explanation for the statement 1. So, the isolated system, heat transfer and work transfer are always 0. There is no the system is not at all interacting with the surrounding. There is no heat transfer. There is no work transfer for an isolated system. The energy is not crossing. In an isolated system, entropy always remains constant. So, when there is no energy transfer, entropy is also constant. So, the two statements are individually correct. But uh, statement 2 is not the explanation for the statement 1. The next question, again we have two statements. Statement 1, thermometer using different thermometric property substance may give different reading except to two fixed points. Statement 2, thermodynamic temperature scale is independent of any particular thermometric substance. So, it is related with the uh, temperature measurement. So, statement 1 is false, but statement 2 is true. Right? Thermodynamic 
temperature scale is independent of any particular thermometric substance. So, whatever may be the, uh, the substance used for measurement, the temperature scale is independent. It is independent of the property of the system, property of the measure, measurement. So, the first statement is false. Next question, again we have two statements. Statement 1, temperature potential difference is the necessary condition for heat interaction between the system. Statement 2, heat transfer to a system inevitably increases the temperature of the system. So, statement 1 is true, but the 2 is not correct. Temperature difference is required for heat interaction. Heat transfer of a system inevitably increases the temperature of the system. That is not true. It may, depending on the heat transfer, it may increase or decrease. So, statement 1 is true, statement 2 is false. The next question, statement 1 again, statement 1, negative temperature are impossible in the Kelvin scale. Statement 2, Kelvin scale is thermodynamic temperature scale. So, again, the two statements are independently correct, individually true. But the statement 2 is not the correct explanation for the statement 1. So, negative temperature is not possible in the Kelvin scale and uh, the Kelvin scale is, is the thermodynamic temperature scale. So, we stop here. Uh, these are all the books I have written in the mechanical engineering subject. You can refer to it and uh, for understanding the subject. So, the uh, I upload the video lectures of all the subjects in the YouTube channel. You subscribe to the channel, use the video for your better learning. Thank you for watching. Please post your comments on the comments box. We will meet again with another video lecture in the solution of engineering service examination preliminary question. Until then, bye bye.